Uh, I'm going to sing the uh, opening song that I usually do when I'm here. And the chorus, I think, is in your... Yes, uh, give yourself to love. Yep. Friends all gathered round loud Something I would say What brings us together here Has blessed us all the day Love has made a circle That holds us all inside Where strangers are as family And loneliness can't hide so give yourself to love If love is what you're after Open up your heart to Tears and laughter And give yourself to love Give yourself to love I've walked these mountains in the rain I've learned to love the sun I've been up before the sunrise To watch the day begin I always knew I'd find you Though I never did know how But like sunshine on a cloudy day Stand before me now So give yourself to love If love is what you're after Open up your heart to Tears and laughter And give yourself to love Give yourself to love Now love is born in fire It's planted like a seed Love can't give you everything But it gives you what you need Love comes when you are ready Love comes when you're afraid It'll be your greatest teacher best friend you have made so give yourself to love if love is what you're after open up your heart to tears and laughter give yourself to love Give yourself to love, you must give yourself to love, give yourself to love. And as you know, when John is here, that's how we open the service each time. That's his opening song. So, you probably noticed our musician today is John Meyer. Very glad to have him here. And our speaker today is the Reverend Susan Dorn. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Very nice to see all of you today. I don't know what's going on with the voice, but it seems to be doing something weird, which just fits in with everything else, I would imagine. Weird is good. Weird is good? Okay. Embrace the weird. <laughs> Embrace the weird. <laughs> Embrace the weird. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it would be something, and it would be something that everybody can relate to very easily. You know, like which weird are we talking about today? There you go. Yeah. Okay, See? I can do a whole series on this. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Welcome. So nice to see all of you here today, and I think at this point in time. I'll light the Christ candle. And as I like to remind everybody each week, the reason for the Christ candle is strictly meant to be a visual. 
too soon. <laughs> it went out. <laughs> Weird. The light will never go out of you. Oh. Close call. Nice it's just a visual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we'll try it again. What was that about weird? She knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. And look, I was trying to remind us all. Strictly meant to be a visual. A visual reminder of the Christ light that is within all of us at all points in time. So there that is. And now I'm going to ask Reverend Susan if she will please do the opening prayer. My pleasure, thank you. <clears throat> and if you want to close your eyes, feel free or look down at the ground or look up, up in the air. And I just know right here and right now, everyone gathered here in this beloved church is here by divine ordinance that you've gathered here today to hear the music and to hear the words and to be that very presence of Christ that Judy has just talked about. For we are here to be a light shining as a beacon to all others everywhere. Light to light, love to love. And so for today, I, for today I give thanks and praise for this opportunity for this community to come together. Thank you God, thank you life. Thank you, love. Amen. And thank you, Susan. You are welcome. Okay, and at this point in time, we're going to do the congregational song, Grateful, and you will find the words to it in your bulletin. And they're on the front page and the back page. This is a long one. <coughs> uh oh. And feel free to stand up if you want to, just to stretch. <laughs> I am so grateful, so grateful I am grateful for all the love that I have I am so grateful, so grateful I am grateful for all the love that I have Everywhere I look and every place I see his love reflected shining back to me I just give thanks for all these simple things The joy and peace that gratitude brings That's why I'm grateful, so grateful I am grateful for all the good that I have I am so grateful, so grateful I am grateful for all the good that I have Every day I wake before I open my eyes I count my blessings and I realize Life is a miracle when I see it that way And focus on the beauty each day And I am grateful, so grateful I am grateful for all the love that I have I am so grateful so grateful I am grateful for all the good in my life I am so grateful so grateful I am grateful for all the joy in my heart I am so grateful so grateful I am grateful for all the peace in my mind I am so grateful so grateful I am grateful for all the faith that I have. I am so grateful, so grateful. I am grateful for all the love in my hand. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Very, very nice. <laughs> and now I'm going to ask Pam Smith if she will please step up. She is going through the... Um, unity basic principles and this week we are dealing with the one the second one there you be thank you hello um, the most powerful and personally meaningful of the unity principles is the second one will you please read with me it's inside our bulletin on the second on the inside yeah. our essence is of God 
Therefore, we are inherently good. This God essence was fully expressed in Jesus the Christ. Everyone has the spark of God within. We are always connected directly to the indwelling presence of God without needing anyone to intercede for us. Therefore, we can receive guidance directly and we are always worthy to receive God's good. We have the potential to follow the example of Jesus who shows us how to perfectly express our divine nature just as he did. This second principle emphasizes our self-worth and our potential as spiritual beings. It links us together when we behold the Christ within all people. It stimulates love and understanding of ourselves and each other. We can align ourselves with the Christ standard, not as an ideal, but as a living reality. We are seeing and honoring ourselves as the beautiful spiritual creations. Amen. Thank you, Pam. That was wonderful. Appreciate it very much. And now I'll remind everybody of the prayer box. You will find um, requests on the back of the pews. If you'd like to fill one out, you are more than welcome to. This is this being the last Sunday of the month. These are all collected and sent back to Silent Unity, where they are prayed over for an additional 30 days in the Silent Unity Chapel. So if you want to put a prayer, <clears throat> you're welcome to bring it up, put it directly in the box, back in our prayer corner, in the brass bowls when they come around. But an awful lot of power and good things go into this. So, And now I think we will do the monthly affirmation. And you'll find the cards in your bulletin. And we'll do the one, please, for Unity by the Sea first. Unity by the sea gratefully receives God's abundance and shares it joyfully. And for ourselves, I gratefully receive God's abundance and share it joyfully. And so it is. And now I have asked Meredith if she will read our daily word. blessing my church home <laughs> provides an energy and divine love to all who enter. When I consider the seemingly negative energies in the world around me, I may wonder how my positivity makes a difference. The answer can be found within the boundaries of the space that is my church home. Why? <laughs> uh, for both. My love enfolds physical form that is home for me, ensuring that it is safe and comfortable. With the same spiritual energy, I include all those who live within my home and those who visit. If there is another space that I consider a spiritual or sacred space, a nature sanctuary, a spiritual center, or more, I include it in my prayer intention. It too radiates the same divine love that fills my heart. I am grateful for the comfort and support it provides me and all enter there. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation and in quiet resting places. Isaiah 32. Thank you, Meredith. And now we're going to have special music again from John. Right? I guess so. <laughs> That's what the list says. <laughs> That's what, it must be true. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, Sunday bulletins and the internet. It's got to be true, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a Gordon Bach tune called Turning Toward the Morning. Now, Gordon Bach is one of those Canadian guys and used to these bitter, cold, snowy winters, which we don't have much here. But I'm from Minnesota, and I have them, so I, <laughs> I know about these. When the deer is bedded down And the bear is gone to grind And the northern goose has wandered off To warmer bay and sound It's so easy in the cold to feel The darkness of the year And the heart is growing lonely for the morning 
Oh, my Joni, don't you know The stars are swinging slow And the seas are rolling easy As they did so long ago If I had a thing to give you I would tell you one more time that the world is always turning toward the morning. <laughs> now October's growing thin, November's coming home, you'll be thinking of the season, the sad things you have known. You'll hear that old window walking, Hear him singing high and thin And you could swear he's out there singing of your sorrows Oh my Joni, don't you know The stars are swinging slow And the seas are rolling easy as they did so long ago If I had a thing to give you I would tell you one more time that the world is always turning toward the morning. And when the darkness falls around you, the north wind comes to blow, and you hear him call your name out as he walks the brittle snow. That old wind don't mean you trouble, he don't care or even know He's just walking down the darkness toward the morning Oh my Joni, don't you know That the stars are swinging slow And the seas are rolling easy as they did so long ago If I had a thing to give you I would tell you one more time that the world is always turning toward the morning. Now it's a pity we don't know what the little flowers know. They can't face the cold November. They can't take the wind and snow. They put their glories all behind them, bow their heads and let it go, but you know they'll be there shining in the morning. Oh, my Joni, don't you know, the stars are swinging slow, and the seas are rolling easy as they did so long ago. If I had a thing to give you, I would tell you one more time that the world is always turning toward the morning. Yeah, the world is always turning toward the morning. Thank you, John. That is very, very nice. And now it is time when I turn it over to Reverend Susan. <laughs> I still giggle. <laughs> you still don't believe it, huh? Oh, yeah, there are days. Yeah. Thank you so well, much. I go along with that. <laughs> uh, let's get all these thousands of sheets of paper in order. Well, good morning. Good morning. Everything turns towards the morning. I love that. Somehow I'll work that in here. That was just beautiful. Especially the little flowers. They bow their heads and then, but in the morning, there they come again. Maybe that's grace. Who knows? So, the holiday season in the United States has officially begun. And despite what retailers, athletic organizations, and candy sellers have said, it did not start with Hallmark movies in July. It did not start with holiday decorations in August. It did not start at Halloween, and it did not start, I'm sorry, John, with football games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is not when the official holiday season in the United States began. It began on Thursday. 
giving thanks. Our holiday season begins by giving thanks. And the tradition started like a long time ago. And you probably know the story, but I'm going to recap it a little bit. You know, the 101 people came over on the Mayflower to a new land, a free land. They met what today I will call them Native Americans. I may call them indigenous. I, I may call them all sorts of things right now. But for today, I'm just going to call them the native people of this country. And they had met white people before. So they were not exactly afraid of them. And at least one of them sort of spoke English. So there was communication with these 101 people who came over on the Mayflower. And a year later, there were 55 of them. Now they were taught by these people of this land how to deal with the soil that they'd never dealt with before because it was different than what it was in England and the climate was different than it was in England. So they had help learning how to deal with things in this new country. And so when it came time to do their harvest meal, which was traditional throughout all of Europe, Everyone had a harvest meal. They had different things to be thankful for. That there were still 55 or so of them left. Their gratitude was great. Um, one of the stories I read was when um, the white people went out to shoot turkeys or meat for this harvest festival. Um, the native group of people thought they were after them. And so a bunch of them went to the white men's area and said, what are you doing? We're just trying to hunt for game. And they went, oh, my interpretation, oh, well, let us help you. And so it became a communal meal with everyone giving thanks. Giving thanks. Now, so the star of our Thanksgiving is the meal. And whether you do it in a big location or a little location, whether you're a single person who has a meal at your table or a vast bunch of people having a huge meal, it all begins with giving thanks at the meal. And as a kid, our family was not religious. Now I understand that mom and our great grandmother read their Bibles and such, but we never really said grace that I remember at the table ever. And at Thanksgiving, even though they provided fabulous food and we had other family members in, we never said grace. We never gave thanks for our food. Somebody would compliment them saying, wow, this is a wonderful spread. The turkey is wonderful, et cetera, et cetera. So there was, there was Thanksgiving, but not in a formal set. And then as I got older, on my own, invited over to different people's houses for Thanksgiving, I learned different traditions that some people, the eldest of the family there would say a prayer, which usually went something like, thank you, Lord, for this bounty, for this beautiful celebration of Thanksgiving, and for all who have attended here, I give thanks and praise for your for your gifts of this season, amen. I went kind of like that, almost any place I went. And then I got more into science of mind and the Thanksgiving table became everyone going around the table saying one thing that they give thanks for. And then the eldest person or the most senior minister at the table would give the final blessing, which would be pretty much what I said before. So, I got more into this praying before a meal, but it really hit home when um, my dear, dear beloved friend Jay Allen, who was the epitome of health, got pancreatic cancer. And he was doing fine for a few months. It was stage four, by the way. And then he got weaker and weaker, and he had to have a medical thing someone help him with a medical thing every night. So his brother Tom and I traded off nights to do that. Well, in the meantime, he was supposed to eat particular kinds of food, and he really didn't have the energy to do any cooking. 
So every every other night, no, yeah, every other night, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, my sister Elizabeth and my best friend Candy would go to Jay's house and prepare a meal of food that he was supposed to eat. And he would come to the table and the four of us would say a prayer, because that was Jay's tradition. And as he got weaker and weaker, we made a shortcut. Because he couldn't, it, by walking to the table, he didn't have breath anymore to say a prayer. So we created what I'm calling the shortcut. And what we all said out loud together was grace. Now I don't know exactly what Candy or Elizabeth or Jane meant by that, but I can tell you what I meant and mean by that. I meant, thank you God that the four of us are joined here together still. Thank you God for Jay's amazing ability to be at the table and to eat anything. Thank you God for my sister and Candy for our good health and our good fellowship because the four of us are family. And he passed. But, but that shortcut has not left us. Now, maybe not every night at dinner, Elizabeth and I don't always say the word grace. But chances are one of us does and then the other one follows suit. When we go out for a meal into a restaurant, we say out loud, grace. When Candy's along with us, she joins right in because we know what this means. And it means something different to each one of us. So this shortcut became very, very, very important to me and is now my habit, which is a good habit. But then I thought, well, uh, what does grace mean even, really? Because it is confusing if you just hear people talk about grace, the quality of grace rather than the prayer of grace. So I'm gonna give you some definitions. And the first one I didn't like very much, and I'll tell you why. The grace of God. So grace is unmerited favor. Okay, I didn't like that. Unmerited? To me, I mean, I deal with unworthiness anyway. I went, unworthy favor? Ooh. And an acquaintance of mine, every week when we have a prayer circle, he uses that term. So I read more of the definition. God's goodness towards those who have no claim or reason to expect divine favor. It's that unexpected goodness that just happens. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to be anything for it. Grace from God just happens. Just happens. It's the experience of awe or wonder, gratitude and unconditional love when you're in harmony with yourself. Oh, <laughs> and with others. The whole idea of, of divine grace is present in many religions. It's not, it's not a hidden secret. It's divine influence which operates in humans to regenerate, to consecrate, to inspire virtuous impulses and to impart strength to endure trials and resist temptation. Now, not part of the talk, but I'm gonna tell it anyway. If you watch Ellen DeGeneres, she bestows grace, unexpected favor. Recently, it, there was this young man, he's from one of the countries in Africa, I don't remember which one. And by lottery, he was allowed to come to the United States so he could get further education. 
And the money he had didn't quite go far enough, so he started working and working and working. And um, he sent, and he watched Ellen. And so he sent her a video. And in that video he said, I just love you. You give and give and give, and you, you just are wonderful, and I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for influencing me. Thank you. So she invited him to the show and brought him up on stage. And he talked about how he is able to, um, he was able to get his sister and his brother into school. His sisters in college, his brothers in high school. And he's earned enough money so they can learn. And he's just so grateful. And recently he just got himself enough money and scholarship to go to college himself. It's like he was so excited. And she said, well, that is so wonderful. I've got a few things for you for college. And so out comes this cart. And he's going, oh, well, first of all, when he first came up on stage, he petted her and said, are you real? <laughs> are you real? So he's just like this. So she, out comes a cart, not much bigger than this. And on it is a laptop, which he would need in college. There's some spiral notebooks so he can write notes. Uh, there's some earphones, there's an iPad. And she brushes, <laughs> she brushes a key on the laptop and up comes $25,000. She gave him $25,000 through one of her corporate sponsors. Unmerited favor, just because. He didn't do anything for it. He did not expect anything from it. That is grace. And it's grace on a real big level. But we do grace ourselves. Each and every day, we provide some sort of grace for others. I'll just bet. And this year, with all of the earthquakes and floods, the storms, the tornadoes, the shootings. I swear in Portland every day for a solid week there was some sort of fatal accident in Portland. Not a shooting, automobiles colliding. And fires, oh the fires of California. One of our good friends, Carlene Lovering, who was here for my ordination, she lives in paradise. But her trailer house, her trailer sits up on a, ri a ridge. And two of the people in that trailer park stayed. And their, their, their trailers were safe, but they watched the fires almost come up the hill. They watched paradise burn. And so, sometimes, it's easy to forget our blessings when we're sitting at home, watching the devastation, listening about the shootings. Many of us give funds, some of us send clothing, some of, I mean, we do, we are a giving bunch of people. That's been true of the whole United States for years now. Floods happen and people give. Animals are without homes and so people home them. They adopt them, they take them in. But sometimes, sometimes we forget. There's a, a song Josh Groban made famous. Other people have as well. I'm going to read you some of the lyrics. Because, like I said, I don't always say grace. I don't always give thanks for what I'm grateful for. Sometimes I even forget I'm grateful. And so Josh sings, some days we forget to look around us. Some days we can't see the joy that surrounds us. So caught up inside ourselves, we take when we could give. Look beyond ourselves, there's, there's so much sorrow. And it's way too late to just say, I'll cry tomorrow. Each of us must find the truth in ourselves. And even with our differences, there's a place we're all connected. Each of us can find each other's light. There's so much to be thankful for. Light has been pretty much my theme throughout my year of talks. 
that light represented by the Christ candle. And like I said to Judy, the light inside of you will never go out. Sometimes it's a little dim. Sometimes you're a little sad. Sometimes you're downright frustrated. But look around you. Look up. Look up to the morning. Look up and see the blessings that you have right here surrounding you even right this instant. This is grace. This is Thanksgiving. This is why we're here. Grace is yes. It is the realization that everything is working for you, that your body, your mind, your spirit are in alignment for the single purpose of bringing you more wisdom, more joy, more light, more peace, more community, more love. When you realize that the entire universe is conspiring on your behalf, you are experiencing grace. Grace is a sense of grand alignment with the universe when your inner and your outer self align that brings abundance not only to you but to the world. And not only does God bestow grace upon you, you bestow it on others. Sometimes you don't even realize it. Sometimes you don't even know it. I challenge you and I challenge myself during this holiday season to say a prayer out loud, out loud, before at least one meal a day. And if you don't, if you, if you are embarrassed, or you don't want to say a bunch of words, I encourage you to use the word grace. Because grace means something to you individually. And when you bless your food or bless an organization or bless whatever and you just say grace, that energy will be imparted back into the universe, back into the light from which you came. Because there's so much to be thankful for. There's a Bible quote, and I didn't write down where it's from. But it says here, I know that right here and now that God's grace is more than sufficient for all my needs. For God's strength is made perfect in our times of weakness. So today for a meditation, I want to do a guided meditation if you want to play along with me. And I invite you to close your eyes and be comfortable and listen to my voice and follow along as you will. And I would start by saying, as you inhale, say to yourself, Christ is in me. And as you exhale, I am in Christ. Christ is in me. I am in Christ. Christ is in me. I am in Christ. And I invite you to let your imagination guide you as you come before a table that is beautifully, beautifully prepared for guests. And there's food and there's candles and there's however many chairs you want there to be, which can grow or recede as we go through the ideas. And you are standing at the foot of the table. And guests arrive one by one. And, at, and you can invite whoever you want to be at this table. They can be people in your life currently or in the past. 
people who are alive or those who have passed on. It could be people you don't even know. And I invite you, as a person comes to be seated at the table, look in their eyes, look in their face, and imagine you see light shining from them. And as your gift to them, you wish them a gift of God. It could be any gift, abundance, love, joy wisdom, hope, health, inspiration. And see them acknowledge your gift and they sit down and now another guest comes. And just take time to welcome them to your table and giving them a gift of God. Laughter, beauty, health, balance. And as your table is filled up, soon you notice that there is someone at the head of the table. And as that person at the head of the table looks upon you, they're looking deep into your eyes. And what you experience is an aura of love and joy and benevolence beaming directly towards you. And as you take this in, as you take in this gift, something inside of you responds and you come to the realization that what is looking at you is your very soul awakening, radiating the very love, peace, joy, forgiveness, and giving it and reminding you that this is who you are. Take in as much as you can, accepting all that you can, because this is the truth of who you are at your soul level. You are the radiant Christ within. You are love unconditional. You are joy overflowing. You live and move and have your being in an abundant life of good. Christ is in you. You are the Christ. Christ is in you. You are the Christ. And I invite you to look around your table filled with all of these beings you've invited. And say to yourself, out loud or silently, say with me the word grace. Grace. You can come back to the room slowly and feel your feet on the floor, knowing you are fully, completely supported right here and right now, body, mind, and spirit. And as your eyes refocus around the room, look around you. Because today, in this space, these are your invited guests. These are your experiences of light and love, peace, tranquility, and benevolence. 
And as you look around this room and as you remember the table that you just set, you might realize that this dining table is all filled with aspects and qualities of you. Thank you, God. Amen. So, after all that, we get to do our offering and our offering blessing. And then John will give us some more beautiful music. And I invite you to take your offering in your hand. Whatever gift, your very presence, take that in your hand and put it on your heart. And repeat with me the blessing that's in your, your program. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Amen. So this talk was about not forgetting about grace, so we're going to sing the grace chant. And uh, I would like you all to join me. We'll go through it about three times. If you don't know it, by the time we get to the second time around, you will. <laughs> To thy hands I commit my spirit, thy will is my will. Heal me at depth so that I may glorify God. Reveal that which needs to be revealed. Heal that which needs to be healed so that I may glorify God. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Thy will is my will. Heal me at depth so that I may glorify God that which needs to be revealed heal that which needs to be healed so that I may glorify God into thy hands I commit my spirit thy will is my will heal me at depth so that I may glorify God. Reveal that which needs to be revealed. Heal that which needs to be healed so that I may glorify God. So that I may glorify God. Thank you. Yes, that's beautiful. So, for all of these tithes and offerings, blessings upon the giver and the receiver, for I know that we are all abundant in God. For, for, and for that, we glorify God. Thank you, life. Thank you, Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. I know what's next. I know, I know, I know, I know. Michael, Michael gets to read that fabulous thing in your program. The Unity Statement of Peace. Good morning. Please join me in reading our statement for peace. It's in your bulletin. <coughs> Unity stands for peace in the presence of conflict, for love in the presence of hatred, for forgiveness in the presence of injury. Unity honors the many names for God, the many paths to God, the many ways to worship God. 
For there is only one power and presence of God, and that God loves each one of us equally. It is therefore the position of unity to urge all nations, their leaders, and their people to turn to God by whatever the name for guidance during these challenging times and to pursue peace, not war, for this is what honors the God of all our faith traditions. Unity stands for peace in our lifetime. And the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, and they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. I will not be the part of the killing of any child, no matter how lofty the reason. Not my neighbor's child, not my child, not my enemy's child, not by bomb, not by bullet, not by looking the other way. I will be the power that is peace. Thank you, Michael. So now we come down and gather in a circle. And this is the time that we add our prayers for people, for situations, for whatever, into this beloved circle. And you may do it quietly, or you may do it however you choose, saying your name or for condition out loud. I just know that it is all done right here in the And for all of these people, situations, groups of people, I give thanks and praise for they too are filled with the very grace that is God. And the light of Christ shines within them as well. Amen. Um, song? Okay, we gotta do the song now. So now we do these turns. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> we let her do that now and again. Let there be peace on earth and let it. on earth the peace that was meant to be with God as creator family all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my serious vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. The light God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you, God.